welcome to Big Friendly Grabber. Hope you're well, you brilliant, brilliant people. Now, who doesn't love nachos? Everyone loves nachos, and if you say you don't love nachos, then I do believe you are lying, sir, madam, or other. Me, I absolutely love nachos, and they are such an easy and quick thing to do. You know, just get some tortilla chips, chuck on whatever toppings, you know, sauce and stuff like that, throw on some cheese, some jalapenos, and then boom, you're pretty much done. But, what if you want to just take things a little bit further? Perhaps you don't like some of the nachos out there, or rather the tortilla chips out there, like Doritos or something like that. Perhaps they're too salty or, or something like that, or perhaps you're just worried about what goes into them. Well, we're going to make our own homemade nachos today, and we're going to do that using tortillas. Yep, we're going to use tortilla wraps to make our own nachos, because that's basically what they are. They are tortilla chips, so we're going to be taking these, chopping them up, frying them, and we will get our own tortilla chips and that way we've got a better idea of what's going into our tortilla chips and it's just it's just a nice thing to do every now and again is it worth the effort yeah i think it is so we're going to use these and we're also going to make our own salsa guacamole and it's going to be great i can't wait it's going to be my lunch and i haven't had nachos for ages so let's go make some nachos right for our nachos first things first we're going to make our salsa so i've got myself a four nice tomatoes here I'm just going to chop into quarters. Sometimes people will peel the tomatoes first by kind of like scoring the skin and then popping them into some boiling water that makes it easy to peel them. I'm not bothering because I can't be bothered <laughs> to be honest, but I am going to get rid of the seeds in the middle because we don't want this too wet. And I'm just going to dice up my tomatoes into chunks. Don't have to be too precise about this because after all, it's a salsa. Have it as chunky or as smooth as you like. Then I want myself one red onion. Oh, actually, I want half a red onion. Don't worry about the other half. We're going to use that in our guacamole in a bit. Very carefully slice this down here. And then chop down like so. Dice up my red onion. In goes my roughly chopped red onion. Then one garlic clove. And chop and skin. Now you can dice this, but I'm just going in with my garlic rocker because it's much quicker. And that goes. And I'm going in with one red chili because I like a bit of kick to my salsa. Not too much. Not blow your head off, just a little bit like, oh, hello, that's there. Then I'm going in with a handful of coriander. If you're one of those people that can't stand coriander, then you can just leave it out. Maybe you can sub it with parsley or something like that. I do like coriander, so I am going in with it. In that goes. And in there, I want three teaspoons of white wine vinegar, or cider vinegar, if that's your preference. I have white wine. And then you want the juice of one lime. Now, the other day when I went to the shop, they didn't have any limes because I think it was Cinco de Mayo. So probably people buying up limes for various things. So I've just got a bottle of lime juice. So I'm gonna use a tablespoon of lime juice. And then I'm just gonna mix that all together. And that is our lovely chunky homemade salsa. I'm gonna pop that off to one side while we get on with our guac. Right, now for our guac, I've got myself four small avocados here. If you've got larger avocados, then probably two's enough, but I could only get hold of the smaller ones, so I'm going to use four. Cut these open in half. Uh, that's how you can tell your knife's sharp, because you can cut through the stone of an avocado. Okay, <clears throat> that's my skin off my avocados. Now they aren't as ripe as I would have liked, but we play the hand we're dealt. I will work around this, because once I get some salt and some lime juice and stuff like that on them, they will be fine. There's a bit of skin left on that one. So I'm just gonna get in and start chopping this up roughly. And with that all roughly chopped up, I'm gonna go in with a good helping of salt, maybe one to two teaspoons worth. And with that all roughly chopped up, I'm gonna go in with a good helping of salt, maybe one to two teaspoons worth. And then I'm going over with the juice of a lime. I'm just doing this all on the board. Yeah, so I've diced that up until it's getting really fine and even a little bit mushy. Now, if you want kind of like a chunky guac, then you can kind of leave it around there. But if you want a nice smooth one, which I do today, I'm going to pop it into a little food processor. And I'm just gonna blitz this up until it's nice and smooth. 
halfway through that section, the battery in my lapel mic decided to die on me. So there will be no sound for that part. So I'll just have to do a voiceover. So I've switched to my boom mic for now, or like directional mic. So the sound quality might be a bit different from this point on. Apologies for that, but I thought there was more battery life left in my mics than there actually was. So apologies for that. But all that was was mostly chopping, so you didn't miss out on much. And I now have a lovely guacamole here. Basically, what I said was that if you want a chunky guac, you could have left it where I chopped it. Otherwise, pop it into a food processor, blend it up until it's nice and smooth to let out all those oils from the avocado. And then basically do the same thing we did for our salsa and dice up all your chilies, garlic, onion, tomato, and coriander and pop that in and that'll give you a guac so really didn't miss out on much much like most of my videos so i'm going to clear this all up and we can go on and prepare our tortillas for our nachos right i'm just going to open up my pack of super soft large tortillas which are plain flour now if you want to use corn tortillas you could but i'm going to use plain ones plain flour and what i'm going to do is get a knife down the middle roughly turn them around again do the same again and then do those in half again what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scatter these across a large baking sheet and I'm just gonna pop these into the oven at a fairly low heat probably no more than 100 degrees for about 10 minutes just to dry them out a bit Okay, these have had probably about 10 minutes or so in there, uh, just drying out a bit. So I'm just gonna leave those there just to cool down for a moment. And over here, I've got five liters, which is a lot of vegetable oil, just coming up to heat at about 180 degrees C, that's about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what I'm gonna be frying these in to just turn them into tortilla chips. Right, my oil's come up to heat, so I'm just gonna pop these into the oil, not all of them, half of them. Just move them around, try not to get them stuck together. They won't be too long in the oil, so we'll get them nice and golden and crispy. There we go, these are nice and golden. It won't take very long at all. And the same for batch number two. I'm just going to arrange these into a dish. I'm using a pie dish because it's quite a thick lot. I might have to try one first. Mmm. Come on. It's good by themselves, to be honest. And I'm going to spoon over some of my fresh salsa. At this point, you can put on beef or chicken or anything like that, but I'm just going with some of my salsa. And then, of course, it wouldn't be nachos without nacho cheese. Well, this is not cheese, but it's nacho cheese. I'm going over with a mix of cheddar and red leicester but you can do whatever you want then for me nachos aren't nachos without some jalapenos on the top now i'm just going to pop these into the oven three for about five minutes just enough for the cheese to melt or you can put them under the grill as well but my grill is a little bit unreliable so i'm going with the oven There we go, one lovely big pile of homemade nachos with guac, sour cream, salsa that we made ourselves. It looks great, it smells great. I'm not gonna talk any longer, I'm gonna get in on this action. Oh. Right. Got some cheese there, got a bit of salsa, gonna get some jalapeno, get some of that guac on there as well. There we go, doesn't that look great? Look at that cheese. Close up, come on cheese, cheese, cheesy close up. Oh, there we go, there we go, right. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Oh, that is good. Really good. Is it as easy as doing nachos out of a bag, getting the guac, getting the salsa, doing it all out of a jar and stuff like that? Hell no. Is it more rewarding? Is it tastier? Hell yes. So if you're having people around, as long as we can have people around, then why not give these a go? If it's a small group, 
do these for a movie night. They'll be well impressed. Homemade nachos, that's taking it a level above. I'm not gonna stand around any longer and waffle on because I wanna go eat these, but yeah, give them a go. They are fantastic. They are well worth the effort. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you give those a go, let me know. You can mix them up however you want. Put beef on them, chicken, make them vegan. Up to you. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to find out when new videos are going up. And I will see you next time on Big Friendly Grub. Take care. Bye-bye.